Hello, this is Yusuf for Good Games No One Played, and today we're going to look at Red Steel for the Nintendo Wii. Perfect. Now, Red Steel is about a silent man named Scott who is the silent bodyguard turned silent fiance of Miku, the daughter of the head of the Yakuza who lives in California for some reason. Scott, of course, can't finalize the engagement without asking the Yakuza leader for Miku's hand in marriage. Might I add that that part seems to be the scariest part in the whole game, and they don't even acknowledge it. Can you imagine walking up to the Yakuza leader for the first time and asking for his daughter's hand in marriage? And please don't kill me, sir, but I love your daughter and she loves me. Who am I? I, uh, worked for you as her bodyguard, but I currently don't have an official job. I was hoping you would promote me. Anyway, the timing is perfect because before he could even talk to the leader, a hostile takeover started happening and Scott couldn't do anything but swoop in and save his girlfriend and the leader. Miku gets caught up in all the drama and gets kidnapped and the whole game is about you saving your fiance from the mother Yakuza. I mean, they really should have called this game the fiance. That would have looked much better on on a on a video game disc. Red Steel. I mean, both of the names are pretty schlocky, but I just found myself screaming, "I'm the fiance!" Every time somebody was like, "Who the hell are you?" Man, you called me a pig like I was a cop or something. I ain't no cop. I'm just trying to marry this chick. You guys don't understand my role in this game, man. I am Scott the Boyfriend. I'm the fiance. I'm the fiance. Red Steel? It's, uh, it's, it's so, so... Uh. Anyway. Um, I really love this game. It's completely based in Japanese culture. Now, I'm not Japanese, so I don't know how authentic it is, but I really love media that focuses on one culture. This game has a small nuance to it because it starts in California with the Yakuza and then of course they go to Japan. And the game goes out of its way to hire people who actually have Japanese accents and they say Japanese things every now and then and some of the Japanese people don't even have accents, they speak perfect English. Alright then, if this is all I mean to that ungrateful jerk, I don't owe him a damn thing. What? Hey, man. Brother. When they told me I'd see some action in this place, I thought they just meant with the girls. The rest of the game, people have a polar opinion of. Uh, a lot of people have a problem with the shooting. You can basically stand there with the Wii Remote and shoot things on the screen. But if you put the Wii Remote down or turn it to the left all the way, your camera will go ape nuts. There are also a few special techniques that you can use with your gun, like slowing down time to shoot guns out of the henchman's hands, or hit them with headshots. If I slow down time, I'm knocking guns out of people's hands, for sure. But I really didn't care that much about slowing time down. I just want to bang, bro. There are also sections where you gotta put away your gun and cross swords with a Mickey Ficky. Essentially, you are countering their attacks. If they swing with a weak attack, you want to parry and strike. But if they swing with a strong attack, then you want to sidestep and strike. Easy peasy, shredded cheesy. As the game progresses, Mikado, the Yakuza Samurai teacher's daughter, will teach you new moves. A lot of these moves are for breaking the other guy's katana. Uh, so this katana system was great and crappy at the same time. What I mean is, the sword play that made it cool also made it suck. First of all, the sword fight was actually pretty responsive. I didn't use a Wii Motion Plus, and the katana was more responsive than most games that do have a Wii Motion Plus. It was pretty ridiculous. If you swing diagonally upward, Scott would slash diagonally upward. If you turned your Wii Mote, he would turn the sword. It was pretty immersive, I can't lie. 
However, most of the moves called for only left, right, up, and down motions. So the exactness in the sword play will mess up your combo. The game would be like, no dumbass, I said right, left, not diagonally up to the right and diagonally down to the left. I didn't really want to argue with the game engine, so all I really did was right and left after I parried or dodged. Also, if I moved the Wiimote too quickly, the game didn't register the slashes. So I would slash left and right, and then Scott would just spin the hilt around and not do the second strike. However, I found a way around this by alligator arming it. Now, alligator arming is when a football player or receiver is supposed to catch a ball and they know they're about to get hit by a guy running up on them. So instead of reaching out fully to catch the ball, they pull their arms in to brace themselves for the impact. They end up not catching the ball, but at least they save their ribs, right? So that's pretty much what I did. I put my elbows to my kidneys and then I swung left and right trying to simulate the kids motions. And then I did it rhythmically. And once I got the rhythm together, Scott swung that sword like a pro. He only swung left and right, but if you dodge or parry something and then do that swing, you get the guy like two or three times every single time. And you don't even need to know super moves. So that's pretty cool. They also have a manner in which you can break the sword. So if you break the sword using using the sword breaking moves, then breaking the sword will automatically stop the fight as well. Now I will say the end guy, you can kill him or you can spare his life. In order to spare his life, you would have to break his sword. Now I did all this reflex movement and stuff using my skills to not to kill the guy, right? And then when I got the bad ending, I went back and did the good ending and it just ended up breaking his sword was a little bit easier. <laughs> just kind of knelt down and did some move and then he had to block it. it. It was weird. It was way easier than I thought. So every swordsman that challenges you to a duel has a pattern and they are easy enough to figure out. Like if the dude was a big bruiser, he would do more heavy hits so you could sidestep. Uh, some guys did three weak and then it's a heavy hit. All you would have to do is be aware of their pattern and then rely on your reflexes and you got them. And it was just difficult enough for you to feel cool whenever you beat the bad guys. Because of the sensitivity of the sword moves on the Wii Mote, it made it really irritating there was no separate place you can go to practice your sword moves. Makoto would teach you the move and you could do it three times on her and that would be the end of the lesson. The only way that you could do the sword move again is if you're out there in the field trying to slice up a samurai that is trying to kill you. While you are in the dojo would be a great opportunity to cut up a practice dummy or something, but for such a complex sword system and such intricate sword movements, the game gave you a middle finger when it came to practicing. And because of that, you don't really enjoy the sword play until the middle of the game, even though they throw you into a lot of scripted fights. Two more things. One, if you beat somebody in a sword fight and do not kill them, or you shoot a henchman's gun out of his hand, they will surrender. If you choose not to kill them, then you will earn respect. From what I can tell, there is no reason to earn respect. There's no trophy to get on the Wii for doing mundane tasks, and nothing is unlocked regardless of how many respect points you have. Sorry, bro. Two, if you, like me, start playing a game half tired and don't hit the record button, the replay stage section on the menu will not include the cutscenes in the replay. This was pretty frustrating, but it's the most frustrating when there is two endings and you're the type of let's player who plays them both. So after I got the bad ending, I went back to replay the whole last level and fulfill the requirements to beat the game and get the good ending but the game just kicked me back to the menu instead of showing me the cutscene. 
had basically had to steal 10 year old footage from some Swedish guy who posted the good ending. That's a harsh screw up because the story in this game is what drove me to finish it. So that's all I got. Red Steel is a better game than a lot of people give credit. It's kind of hipster cool to complain about the controls on a Wii game, and I admit that it isn't the best controls that I've ever had to deal with, but if you're a fan of first person shooters and you own a Wii, to me it's a no brainer. I just hope the story in Red Steel 2 is just as good. People seem to like it a lot more. So let me go back to being a daddy for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> get this editing in uh, before the kids run in here and scream onto the microphone. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.